What's going on, America? This is Kevin from Kevin's Corner. So, is this what we come to? CNN, um, literally demonizing high school students um, just because they are either pro-life or they're making um, declarations about, you know, Donald Trump by wearing a hat. Um, anyway, that you can make Trump look bad and like he's influencing all of this hatred. He's just, he's giving everybody, everybody, the green light to just go off and, and do horrible things like, like mock a Native American elder um, who's simply just minding his own business and protesting, <laughs> beating a drum. And I guess these uh, uh, MAGA hat wearing kids decided, hey, even though we're over here minding our own business, and, and talking to some Hebrew Israelites that CNN described as just some, some black men preaching the Bible, just minding their own business, probably being harassed by what us. Let's leave them run over there and harass this Native American man who we don't even know what he's saying anyway. He's just making some noises and beating the drum. But it just makes us so mad. We, we spotted him and right off grip, we're like, you know what? Let's go demonstrate all of our hate and animosity towards the Native Americans who did nothing and already are American citizens. But for some reason, since CNN says that we were chanting, make America great and build the wall, and it has nothing to do with the Native Americans, some reason, though, we're going to go ahead and just include them by going over and mocking and taunting this Native American elder that also they want to throw in there, too, also was a Vietnam veteran. So then, instead of them going and doing some, some work, like saying, hey, can we get all the video footage concerning this whole incident before we paint a narrative? No, they didn't do that. Here's what they looked at. Let me get this straight. White males, Christian white males, make America great again hats on Christian white males, pro-life. Make American great again hat wearing Christian white males, but we can't call them pro uh, life. We have to call them anti abortion. Okay, so you got all these things. Hmm, how can we paint a narrative? How can we make this look like this is, this is a product of Donald Trump and all of his rhetoric? Now, if they wouldn't have had Make America Great hats on, then this wouldn't even be an issue. If they were not young white men and was all young black men, or let's just say they were all involved in Antifa, CNN wouldn't have brought anybody in to talk to them about it. They never bring anybody in that gets beat up or harassed by Antifa. Remember the old man parked trying to drive and the guy punches in his car and talks about, you're just a white man. Nobody brought him in and interviewed him. What happened? You were minding your business at the stoplight and then some people grow, grabbed you and start trying to punch you and calling you a white man. Yeah, tell us about that. They don't want to know about those things. But they do want to demonize these young men without all the facts or details, probably weren't even interested in it. They did exactly what they did the time in Ferguson when they claimed that the little girl out there on the, uh, on the step yelling about all of the violence was calling for peace. They just showed that clip where she's out there like, stop, y'all tearing up y'all own stuff. They cut it right there. But what they didn't show is right after that, she said, go up to the white neighborhoods and tear up their stuff. See, that's what they like to do. To paint a narrative, it's called propaganda, okay? It's called reinforcing a negative narrative about Donald Trump at the expense of these young high school kids. Now, matter of fact, we see other examples of this during the Trump rallies. Remember how, how we all couldn't wonder why the peaceful protesters that happened to go to Trump's rally somehow would just start getting attacked by Trump uh, supporters? I'm thinking, well, well, how racist are these Trump rallies? So I decided to go and investigate myself. And what I found was shocking. It wasn't the Trump people that were uh, uh, you know, uh, antagonizing and, and, and being loud and disruptive and yelling and taunting. It was the protesters who would sneak in with other things on, take the shirt off. It'd be something on the shirt uh, condemning Trump or saying something, you know, that's going to create a reaction. 
And instead of just standing there, they get loud, disruptive, and then they get snatched out. And later on, we found that Hillary's people were paying those people to come in and disrupt things. But the media, the media only caught the tail end of the reaction of the people being drug out of there. Yeah, uh, they, didn't, they didn't catch the whole clip, see, because they don't want to. They need to paint that narrative that it's all Trump supporters and this rhetoric and that hatred. So then when I heard this, I said, huh. Let me do some investigation. So I looked at all the video footage and I said, um, let me see what all the hubbub is about. OK, because from what I hear, here's this guy, these kids waiting for the bus, OK, to go. They just I guess they were going somewhere. A teacher told them to wait at the bus. Then all of a sudden you hear these black Hebrew Israelites starting to go. They preaching or something. And then the guy goes into a statement where he says, you know, they say, in God we trust on the Bible and this and that, but yet they will give faggots rights. Now, the boys I hear in the video say, oh, whoa, whoa, hey, man, they're people too. They have rights. But according to CNN, they were just four black guys just preaching the Bible, minding their own business. Wonder why they cut out that part or, or, did they not even say, can we gather all the video footage before we paint a narrative? Can we interview multiple people besides just the Native American man who claims that, you know, he was a victim of hatred, you know? But no, they didn't do that. Why aren't they asking the black Hebrew Israelites, why did you use that term? You know, uh, uh, isn't that derogatory? No, they don't want to do that. See, they don't want to get mixed up uh, with, with minorities and black people. They don't want to question them because, see, then, you know, they, they mums work. It's like we're champions of black people and any person of color besides white people. And, and we're willing to excuse their negative behavior so we can hang on to this narrative and keep them hating Donald Trump and white men. Right. So here we have it. Um, then, according to them and according to the Native American guy, uh, he observed all the hatred and tension between the two. And he decided, I'm just going to go over while beating my drum and go right up in that crowd of them. But but. The first narrative was not he went over there. It was the boys surrounded him and started taunting him, mocking his song, uh, yelling all in his face. Yeah, yeah, that's what they said. I mean, so apparently, you know, he, he went right up to now. See, here's the thing about that. Last I checked, there's the stand your ground clause. You know, you don't have to move if somebody comes to you. OK, you can stand there. And, and, and just say, you know what? I refuse to move because you walk straight into my space. So instead of showing the alternative videos that shows the Native American man walks right into their, their little group, um, what they did is just showed the clip where this one white boy is just staring at him with this smir uh, smug look on his face. And the guy's beating the drum right in his ear. Okay. And then, of course, they paint a picture like, yeah, he, he blocked him. In fact, the Native American man said, uh, yeah, I, I said I, to myself, I put myself in a bad situation. Yes, she did. Then secondly, he says, well, and, and I tried to walk and say, let me finish my song on the Capitol steps. And, and, and I was walking through and this guy got right in my way and, and he wouldn't even let me retreat. Now I'm thinking, huh, did CNN ask for any alternative footage to fact check that to see what retreating looks like because see when he was right here the boy was just grinning while he's beating the drum in his ear and the guy had all the opportunity to just back up he didn't grab him and say where you going we ain't gonna let you leave the man could have just backed up or simply went around the boy because the boy was standing there first not to mention hmm his buddy the native american guy's buddy another native american was talking to these teenage boys and telling them, why don't white people go back to Europe? This was never your country anyway, okay? Now, remember, these are white boys that had nothing to do with any of that. They weren't a part of all of that stuff that went on with the Native Americans. And according to the Native American guy, he was peaceful and minding his business. He wasn't trying to protest or counter protest what they were talking about because we later find out that the boys weren't protesting. They were simply making chants about the school like I did when I went to high school. We stand around, be outside like, all right, come on, man, let's sing the uh, fight song. Up in the sky, there'll be a great big thunder, so on and so forth. So they start doing that. And the black Hebrew Israelites, I guess, were close enough to them. So they start yelling out things as well, racial things. 
making all type of derogatory statements. Yeah, but but the media don't care about those things. And the Indian guy decided I'm going to go stick my nose in it. Has nothing to do with me, but I'm just going to go walk over to them and see what kind of stuff I could drum up because that's exactly what he did. He ended up drumming it up. But after all of this happens, okay, they all just depart because the, the kids realize like, well, I don't know really what to do. This man just came in. First, they was like, you know, jamming to him. Then uh, they start singing their fight song loudly. And then afterwards, they decided to start trying to sing along. And then everybody just departed. But according to CNN and then some bogus lawyer that got on uh, some station, he was on CNN too, talking about this was just simply harassment. It was harassment, yeah, uh, just for the noise and all of the, you know, right in the face, that's harassment. Uh, yeah, well, you know what? How can you harass somebody who came to get harassed? This man was like a kid that wanted to get squirted and they shouldn't be wet. Like when your parents, when you're young, they say, hey, look, don't you go out there and get yourself wet because we about to go somewhere and you got your, your church clothes on and they're out there squirting with that water. Don't go in there and get wet. So the kid goes outside and he really wants to get wet. So what he does, he just starts walking towards the water guy with the hose, telling him, don't squirt me though, for real, man. My mama and them said I can't get wet. And the guy's standing there like, go ahead, pass, man. Now the kid knows that the guy's going to squirt him, but he keeps coming anyway because see, he wants to get wet. And then once he gets sprayed, he's going to say, it was his fault. I told him not to squirt me. This guy wanted to get squirted, okay? He walks right up into the crowd. They never harassed him. They never touched the guy like Antifa does or like when the one guy was at the Capitol during the Kavanaugh uh, hearings and he was standing there with his, his, his little signs and the teenagers were going around him and pulling on him and knocking this sign down, all of that stuff. No, that's harassment, okay? Um, or the guy who had to make America great hat on sitting down in a restaurant, the guy come snatch his hat off and throw something in his face. That was harassment. Or the little Latino girl on the campus who took the guy's hat and refused to give it back, and they had to call the police. That's harassment. Yeah, but this right here, this right here was boys minding their own business, and then these guys came right over to their crew. But let's see how CNN paints it. And then, then, all of these commentators, when they brought people on to kind of weigh in about it, they were making bold statements that they can't back up, didn't do any research, nothing. Nobody brought the boys in to interview them. No, I wonder why. They were saying things like, this is nothing more than a product of Donald Trump and all of his rhetoric. He's giving them a license to do things like this. He's just inspiring hate. And I'm thinking to myself, you guys are so nasty, so corrupt, so foul. Just got busted for running with a fake story from BuzzFeed and don't care because you're not interested in facts, all right, or data or real journalism. It all revolves around demonizing Donald Trump at anybody's expense, including these kids. So let's just get real quick into this little clip right here, and then we'll wrap it up. Burns me up. More veterans speaking to CNN after a disturbing viral video shows a group of teens harassing and mocking him in the nation's capital. Here's the video sparking outrage on social media right now. Now listen to this. Shows a video of a group of teens mocking and harassing him in the nation's capital. Okay. Um... Short clip. That's the funny part about it. And already came to a conclusion. Remember, this shows a group of teens mocking and harassing him. Didn't say appears. None of that stuff. But it shows it. This is the evidence she's saying. Nathan Phillips was beating his drum and singing an American Indian protest song. And this was on Friday on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial when he saw a clash erupting between a group of teenage students and four African-American young men preaching about the Bible and oppression. Well, Philip says... Well, well, well. Four black men preaching about the Bible and oppression, but using statements like, and you guys give these faggots rights, uh, calling the black boy that was hanging out with them all types of names because he was hanging with the white guys, um, calling the white kids cavemen, the original cavemen, all of that. That's preaching the Bible, right? Yeah, just peaceful out there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, perhaps. No, they were black Hebrew Israelites. I know that religion. Okay. I've had debates. I know what the religion believes in. I know what they stand for and I know how they feel about other races. And so I guarantee you they weren't preaching the good news, but yet she wants to paint them like that. But all of a sudden here's this peaceful Indian guy. Sensed danger. 
he sensed danger. When I was there and I was standing there and I seen that group of people in front of me and I seen the angry faces and, and all of that, I, I realized I had put myself in a different, really dangerous situation. You know, there's like, here's a group. Now, here's what's funny about that. I watched all, most that I could find, of the footage, different angles, different lengths of it. Not one of the kids looked angry to me. They were all having a great time. They were chanting and they were chanting the school slogans. I didn't hear nobody saying, uh, make America great. I didn't hear anybody saying, build the wall like they claimed it, like this guy claimed they were saying. I didn't hear anybody attack him, nothing. They didn't say nothing bad about him, nothing negative. If anything, they were combating what the Hebrew Israelites were talking about, which they stated that, hey man, that's racist. And gay people are people too. Right now, you would think the left, since they're the champions for gay rights, they should be like, hey, let's condemn what these four black Hebrew Israelites said and let's commend the boys for supporting them. But the boys have mega hats on. So therefore, we can't give them any credit. We don't want the world thinking that make America great again. People actually have souls, actually are, are moral, actually believe in rights for everybody. No, no. We have to go with the narrative that they're wicked, evil, and they want the destruction of everybody but but white people. So let's see what this guy has to say. People who were angry at somebody else, and I put myself in front of that, and all of a sudden, I'm the one who's all that anger and all that wanting to have the freedom to just rip me apart you know that mm -hmm. was scary that okay was, and, and now at this point how can anybody believe this man at this point you're telling me that these major news outlets let this guy get on here and make a statement like this without first saying can we check some other angles some other footage let's get another take on this let's bring the boys in talk to them about what was going on in their minds and hearts let's get some other witnesses besides this guy who all we see is a short clip of him face to face with this kid, right? So this man claims that he sensed the anger and the hatred and they just want to tear him apart. I looked at multiple video clips. I didn't see one frown on any of the boys' faces. Not one. I didn't see one boy snarling at him. I know what it looks like when a person wants a piece of you, okay? It don't look like you chanting, talking, having a good time, laughing, and smiling. It looks like, man, I'm about to tear you to pieces and people holding you and keeping you from doing it. I didn't see that there. I didn't even hear hateful rhetoric. I didn't even hear, shut up, Native American, you nothing but nothing. But yet, according to this guy, maybe his social awareness is off. Maybe his ability to read situations and body language is messed up, okay? Because the last I checked, this doesn't look like I want to tear you apart. And yeah, that doesn't look like that. That doesn't, okay? But according to him, it does. I'm a Vietnam Times veteran, and, and I know that mentality mm -hmm. of there's enough of us, we can do this. Now, here's what's crazy. If you're a Vietnam vet and you know the mentality that there's enough of us and we can do this to you, why would you walk over into their crowd if you detected that they were dangerous and violent, a whole bunch of teenage boys, all right, and you struts over there with the beating drum? Okay, you drew first blood. Okay, go over with a beating drum because you want to be an activist and they don't know what you're coming over there for. They don't know if you're with them or with the Hebrew Israelites or you're just doing a native dance and display or you're crazy. I don't know. Okay, but you walk right into our crowd while we're minding our business, even though the person who first put it out said that the boys came to him. See, but those are stupid details. We don't need to know anything about those. Okay, now nah, we just need to know the narrative they're trying to paint. Remember, MAGA hat, white boys, Christians, okay, and pro life. All of those bad, bad. So all the rest of that stuff means nothing to us, nothing. All right, but that guy brought this on himself. And then even in that, Nothing ever happened. Guy wasn't touched, wasn't called a bad name, wasn't mocked, nothing. They danced, they joined in. Once they figured out, well, wait, what is going on with this guy? What is he talking about? He didn't even stop and say, hey, everybody, peace. How you gonna just beat a drum in the midst of all these boys and don't even give an explanation? You come into their crowd, starts beating the drum. Don't say, hey, everybody settle down. Let's all hold hands and nothing. 
Just I'm going to hopefully the drum and me speaking whatever language I'm speaking. You guys will just know that means that everybody needs to calm down. All right. But his buddy, his buddy who came over with him, let the kids know how he felt, which CNN didn't want to show that when he said all white uh, people should go back to Europe. See, but CNN don't. No, 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 no. No, forget that. Just show the man beating the drum and the kid looking at him. All right. Phillips describes the tense moments now being replayed over and over again online when a young man got right in his face. Watch. When I started going forward and that mass of groups of people started separating and, and, and separating and moving aside to allow me to move out of the way or to proceed, this young fella put himself in front of me and wouldn't move. And so I could, if I took another step, I would be putting my, my person into his presence, into his space. Okay. And are you watching the video? This man is trying to tell us my eyes are not seeing what they're seeing. First of all, you walked right up to the young man who never moved because he was standing there already. Okay. I didn't see the kid come over and get in your way. You walk right up to the kid and expect it that the kid... Because what? You're an elder or you're beating a drum or you're a native. Uh, I mean, you're a, 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 um, um, a war veteran that the kid just automatically says, well, let me get out the way of this guy. All right. I mean, hey, secondly, there was nobody on the sides of him. He could have easily said and went around, but he didn't. Instead, he stood there beating the drum about an inch and a half from the kid's ear. Now. As the kid sits, look at this face. Does that look like the face of anger? Does that look like the face of, I want to tear you apart? The kid got a smile on his face. That doesn't look like if you don't get this dang on drum, because I'm going to be honest, I love Native Americans. But if one of them came up to me while I'm standing there minding my business with my boys, beating a drum in my face, I wouldn't be smiling. I would be going, I'm going to take that drum and shove it up somewhere. You ain't going to want to. Ever play it again, okay? You're going to be like, it don't smell too good. But this kid handled it very well. No touching, no pushing, no nothing. Didn't even say nothing to the guy. But yet, according to the media and this guy, it was harassment. Yeah, it was taunting. That's what it was. All because they were white boys, Christians, had MAGA hats on, and they, what was my fourth one? They were Christians, MAGA hats. Oh, pro-life. All of those things. The left hates all of those, okay? So therefore, they're, you know, they, they got to demonize these kids. They don't care if they're trying to ruin their lives and they're getting death threats. None of that stuff matters. All that matters is making Trump look bad, okay? While pre presenting more fake news. And, and But yet, yeah, they're not the enemy of the people. I think, though, when you release stories and informations that, information that is not accurate, that leads to the destruction and attacks on young adults, I think that might qualify you as the enemy of the people. And allowing only one side of the story to be painted by this man and not even bringing the other people in. Just just judge them from a small clip. Didn't you know no didn't send a reporter out there. Where's Jim Acosta? Why didn't they send him down there to say, anybody else got any footage? Why didn't they send put out an email saying, Can anybody send me other angles so we can see? If that's what really happened, but no, they didn't care about that stuff. Just bring the guy down here so we could give him a chance to paint this false narrative and then we could demonize Trump. Would have touched him and that would have been the, the thing that the group of people would have needed to spring on me. Okay, I'm going to stop this crap right here. He said, if I would have touched him, that would have been the thing that would have given them the green light to spring on me. Now, as I was watching that clip while he stood there beating the drum and other clips, half of the kids around them weren't paying attention. They were laughing, joking, running around, looking like they was playing tag in the background uh, or recording and laughing at their buddy. Like, look at him, man. Yeah, not one of them was like, hey, man, what's up with this dude? Now, I'm just being honest with you. Back in the day, whole bunch of us on the corner laughing and talking. And let's just say a foreign person who we don't know would have stopped came up, got out the car, started walking up to us with no explanation. No, hey, guys, how you doing? No message, nothing. Just come up in the crowd, you know, stone face, walking straight towards us and expecting us all to just get out their, their way, all right? And would have gathered one of my boys' face beating a drum. We wouldn't have been relaxed. We would have been like, 
Hold up, who is this dude? And is he threatening us? What's his intentions? What is he saying? Does he have a message? Nothing. He just assumed they should know through osmosis that he was coming for peace and gentleness. And even in that ignorance, and even in uh, the lack of information, the boys still handled it very well, considering they were high school boys. Nobody fought the dude, touched the dude, yelled at the dude, cursed at the dude, nothing. But yet, the funky, crooked, nasty, dirty, disgusting, dumpster juice, dirty, doodle, green, peanut-having, diaper-wearing media will allow these boys to be ran through the mud, their reputation, all because they were white boys, Christians, had a MAGA hat on, and then, of course, they were pro-life. Those right there is a no-no. And if you could go ahead and say, if we have to demonize these kids with no real proof or alternative information, still we got to do. And they claim they're not fake news. Sorry for the long video, but man, as I've been watching this all day, I, I was real gentle. I didn't want to jump into this one without looking at all the angles that I could look at. And as I looked at it, I'm thinking, this is a bunch of bull crap. Another fake story. And YouTube, better not demonetize me from what I just said about this. Because if they had any integrity, they would go and look at all the alternative videos as well and come to the conclusion that CNN and MSNBC and all of these other outlets who don't do the research and don't look at the videos that I looked at, apparently, are fake news. So why don't you demonetize them? That's all I'm saying. Anyway, you've been listening to Kevin and Kevin's Corner. Find me Wednesday nights, 7.30. We're going to be talking about this this Wednesday. Uh, at 7.30, also check me out, my live radio blog talk show. Um, check out Extreme Tees. Um, usually, I, I was going to try to wear a shirt, but I got in. I had to make the video. I didn't get a chance to rock one tonight. But they're my sponsor. They got uh, the links in the bottom of this video. So click on the link and put my name in, Kevin, and um, you'll get 20% off. And if you want to donate to Kevin's Corner, you can. There's a link in the bottom. Almost at 100,000 subscribers, y'all. So make sure you hit like, share, subscribe, and the notification button. And find me on Facebook and Twitter. And we will see you next time in Kevin's Corner. God bless you.